Now, just over a year ago, in an early slice, I talked about the coming into operation on the 1st of August 2022 yeah. of the Register of Overseas Entities and the related legislation which made it compulsory for overseas entities that own UK property to declare their beneficial owners on a register at company's house with criminal sanctions and fines for failure to do so, as well as an inability to transact. Overseas entities are essentially prohibited from transferring, charging or creating a registrable lease seven years or more unless they are a registered overseas entity. Now, in June this year, the government reported that over 28,000 overseas entities had registered. Apparently, over 93,000 properties in England and Wales are currently owned through an overseas entity, according to land registry data. So, allowing for multiple properties owned by one entity, it follows that most, but certainly not all, Overseas entities have now complied with their statutory duty to register their beneficial owners at company's house. However, the duties do not end with registration. The legislation places great significance on an annual duty on the part of overseas entities to update the register each year to confirm whether or not there have been any changes to the details of their beneficial owners. And a filing at company's house is required even when there have been no changes. Registered overseas entities must be aware of the date on which their registration update is due. This is stated on the register of overseas entities at company's house and falls a year and 14 days after last year's filing. The 14 days is a short grace period to complete the filing after the anniversary. There's a lot of commentary on this at the moment as the first filings took place on 1st of October 2022. So those first anniversaries are now taking place and this is a new live issue. If the entity does not file its update statement on time, Company's House says you'll be committing a criminal offence and you could be prosecuted or fined. They'll add a note to the overseas entity's public record to say they've not filed its updated statement and the overseas identity ID will not be valid until the position is rectified. So the entity will not be able to buy, sell, transfer, lease or charge its property or land in the UK. This means that as regards its ability to transact property, the entity would be in the same position as an entity that hadn't registered in the first place. It would be unable to tra transact with property it already owned and it couldn't apply for registration of title to any newly acquired estate and therefore such a transaction would not be fundable. Now in straightforward cases where there are no trusts and no personal information needs to be shielded from the public register, the updating can be carried out via the company's house online service using an authentication code. However, where any trusts are involved, uh, an, updated, an update statement must be filed using a paper form. And any changes made to the update statement, for example, adding a new beneficial owner, must be verified by a UK regulated agent no more than three months prior to the date of the update statement. So there could be administrative work to be done and professionals to be involved. So it's important that overseas entities holding registered interests in real estate in England and Wales are aware of these updating to filing rules and their potential impact. Checking your due date and starting the process well in advance of that due date is strongly recommended. Thank you very much. I'll see you all again in two weeks' time. Enjoy the rest of the summer.